It's the love script with Paul D. Hanna. Greetings and salutations. This is PDH for the love script. We keep everything all about love. Love for ourselves, love for our God, love for our lovers. And tonight I've got a very special treat for you. We've got Miss Kanique Sky coming to you live from the City of Angels. How are you doing tonight? I'm amazing. How are you doing? I just love hearing that. Amazing. <laughs> I dig yes. it. I dig it. I am doing wonderful. And I'll tell you a little bit about Miss Guy. She is um, a phenomenal talent. She's a multi talented singer, actress, writer, producer, director, set in Hollywood on fire. Uh, you may remember her from American Idol. She was a top 13 finalist there. Um, she won seven NAACP awards for her show Sunday Morning, which was an original piece you wrote. Is that right? It is. It is my baby. Yeah, <laughs> and I, if I remember correctly, that's being set up for a uh, a feature film uh, production. It is. That's yes, 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 yes. Dig it, dig it, dig it. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, what we want to talk about tonight is really um, dating in Hollywood and dating as an artist or a creative type. Uh, what I found yeah. is that there are some very specific challenges to dating um, other creatives as a creative person or other non creatives um, as a creative person. I'm being a creative person myself. Uh, I have experienced firsthand those challenges. So tell me uh, from your experience. Now, from what I understand, you're currently attached. Is that right? I am. Now, is this person in the industry or are they a creative type or are they an outlander? He is in the industry. And he's in the industry, been in the industry for a very, very long time. Okay. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Yeah. So yeah. What, what made you decide... Um, to date someone in the industry? Because I know at one point you had a non-industry rule. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I feel like that's my preference because I kind of feel like, you know, the industry can be a little crazy and, you know, sometimes somebody outside of it can give you a little balance. Um, so I didn't really choose to... Um, not you know deal with somebody in the industry really that's like i said that's just not my typical choice but the gentleman that i'm with now he was pretty um forward and consistent and very much um knew that he wanted to be with me and so he pursued me and then it was just kind of the thing where it's like wow okay this guy is really you know consistent which is really difficult to find period and so, you know, you look up one day and you're like, okay, you know, we're going to see where this goes. So, Dig that. it wasn't by Dig choice. Okay. <laughs> it just, just happened. Well, that's what yeah. happens. Love just happens sometimes, doesn't it? It just happens. That's the life for you. <laughs> so, talk to my listeners about, because you've been on both sides of the fence, um, mm -hmm. the challenges in dating someone in the industry and the challenges in dating someone not in the industry. Oh, man. Well, the challenges in dating someone, I will, I will tackle non-industry first. Um, we have a different kind of passion, um, and we have a different... The reason why we're able to entertain people is because we don't think like the average person. If we thought like the average person, then we could keep them entertained. So people that aren't in the industry sometimes don't understand, A, our level of cr the creative thought process, which sometimes translates into how we communicate, what our emotional needs might be. Um, they also don't understand, you know, when you always, you're so invested in what you do and sometimes you're, you're invested a long time without it seeing any tangible results. People just don't get that. Like, a dream, what is that? No, you go to work, you get a paycheck. You know what I mean? So there's that. Um, in terms of someone that's not in the industry, I think that's some of the most challenging part is just not understanding um, the drive and the tenacity that we have to have before you sometimes see any real fruit to the to what we do. 
So, um, but at the same time, they can offer a balance to our crazy. They do offer a stability, you know, to our all over the place. You know, you know, in your life, you travel so much. You know, doing this, working on this project over here, working on that. And then there's somebody holding down the home front. So that's always kind of cool, you know, <laughs> to have mm-hmm. someone be consistent. Mm-hmm. So I really feel like there are pros and cons to both sides. Um, it's just a matter of, I don't think there's an absolute because every person is different. So it's just a matter of finding the right balance that works for you in terms of, you know, industry or not industry. Um, it helps sometimes if people have had some experience in the industry or maybe have been around it to some degree because then they have a little bit of understanding without necessarily being a part of it, which is great. I think that's a great a great combination. I kind of feel like that's the best of both worlds, but, you know. Yeah, but now it's, it's still different when someone is, because you can be a corporate type in the industry. You don't necessarily... That does being in the industry doesn't necessarily make you a creative, right? So, Absolutely. from your opinion, um, do you think that two creative people in the industry should date? It doesn't work for me, <laughs> but I think anything I we've seen it work beautifully together you know we've seen people who are talented get together and connect and have this beautiful long lasting so I think it can absolutely work for me I don't think that's the choice for me I mean but but now, 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 on the love script we keep it real you know I, number one I'm, okay. gonna, I'm gonna get all in your business so just you know get yourself <laughs> okay. ready for that but you know we see okay. even with those relationships that between two creative people that looks to be okay you kind of hear the rumblings that it's a non-traditional marriage and then you know five ten ten years later you know you, you hear all this stuff come out where it looked pretty and glossy and and ferrari like from the outside but then you start to hear uh later on just how crazy it was so you know as you said it doesn't work for you but you know what would be your advice if your girlfriend is an actress and this actor is pursuing her as you said aggressively and consistently and he just seems to be checking all the right boxes what would be your advice to your girl wow um run (laughs) (laughs) run for it run um you know i can't say that because here's the difference to me with with those type of relationships that you just described i just feel like i don't feel like it's any more or less um shenanigans happening i just feel like with celebrity relationships the world is more privy to it and the world is more interested and even with that brings on additional pressures and problems because you know we all go through things you know what i mean it's just like but when you have a spotlight on you it makes those things a magnified and be more difficult to to deal with so um which is why it's not for me um, I feel like if, if a person feels like they can handle it, I don't recommend it. I just don't. I feel like it's extra pressure that's kind of unnecessary. Um, but I'm not going to tell somebody, if you meet somebody and you feel like this could potentially be the love of your life, you know, to to not go there. Because that's the thing about love. That's the beautiful thing. And that's the sucky thing about love. There's no absolute. And there's just no just don't know until you go down that road and explore it so then let me ask you this um you know one of the things i I have always had a rule that you know i wouldn't date actresses because i think actresses are crazy i just think y'all are are nuts right and Mm -hmm. i'm crazy okay but it's different you know it's just like you know two crazy people will kill each other set the house on fire or you (laughs) you know or tear the walls down yes. making love, you know, so. <laughs> so it's like, but, you know, when it comes to a female like yourself, um, how do you react to uh, a man that you could be dating who's garnering all this attention from women because he's in the industry and because he's in the spotlight? Listen, I, in that situation, it's the man's job to make you feel 
to, to make sure that home feels comfortable and secure. And regardless of what women are fawning or women are throwing a drop, whatever, a mature man is going to do what he needs to do to make sure his wife, his woman, his lady, whatever, is comfortable enough to know that, baby, you got this on lock. Like, this is what I do, and this just comes with the territory, but you you got this. And it's nothing else that, if, if, if he does what he's supposed to do, then no one else can make her feel any kind of way. Like, if the circumstances or whatever, she may not always like it, whatever, but if he shows her that respect and makes her, makes her feel secure, then it's, I feel like it's, it's doable. Would, I, would that be my first choice? Hell no. <laughs> I don't feel like it. Like, I just don't feel like this shenanigans. But if I were to find myself in that situation, or if someone does, it, you have to pay attention to his behavior and what he does. Yeah, but the realness is that, you know, like you said, obviously you, you wouldn't prefer it for obvious reasons, but what I look at is, you know, it's like dating someone with children, right? It's like um, they can be the best person in the world, but ultimately there are other responsibilities and issues that come with dating someone who yeah. has children. You know, there's no way around yeah. it. You know, I was yeah. a single man with children and I never got upset when a woman didn't want to date me because I had kids. And I had my right. situation real in check because I'm a man and I just don't play that. But even when it was in check, you can't control another person. They could be going crazy on the other side of town, still not bring it to your house, but that energy right. affects you, you know? and. Oh, I'm, I'm with you 20,000%. That's why I don't. <laughs> we on the same, we speaking the same language. We're on the same page. That's well, why my motto said, is run for his run. You just said that you're dating somebody in the industry, though. Yeah, but he's so far, like, he's post-production. Ain't got nothing to do with nothing he in the industry, but it ain't. I, listen, I... So ain't nobody rolling up saying, saying, hey, I don't have to worry about know, it. Don't, don't, don't cut that. Don't cut that scene right there. Let me help you out. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh -uh, I don't have those shenanigans in the situation that I'm in now. Okay. Like, at all. All right. And it's a beautiful thing because you're hard-pressed to find somebody, like, that you just truly feel like, you know what, we may have our issues or whatever, but infidelity or cheating or whatever on both sides we're completely like we're not worried you know what i mean yeah. so he's he's mature enough and he's on the in the type of industry where it's not you know he's not in front of the camera or anything like that so it's like you know yeah i don't i don't have those worries i do not have so let me ask you this um because mm -hmm. you know again from my perspective it's difficult being in relationships that are born in the wrong place. In other words, you know, mm -hmm. choosing the wrong mate, right? And so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you know when you've chosen the right person? Well, honey, I will let you know when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> let me call you back on that one. Because <laughs> it's always time will tell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. You know, what I realize now is like one of the things that's well cliche, but the 80 20 is so true. And no matter who you get with, you have to. We're always still learning. We're always learning and evolving, even with ourselves. So, of course, you're always going to be learning and evolving with another person. You have to put in effort to. To learn a person, to learn how to love a person. Like, it's so funny because we're literally at a place right now, like, Wednesday, we set about a date day. We're going to go get the five love languages and we're about to read that to try to help us really understand not how we give love, but how the other person receives love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, for our relationship, I just feel like you always have to be willing to do things to try and, you know, keep things going keep things alive make sure your mate feels love make sure they're getting the attention that they need because you can assume that you you know oh well she knows i love her oh he knows i love her he, but you know if you don't keep 
communication sounds cliche, but it's so true. And it's, that's one of the things that's kind of hard for me because I'm a very prideful person. Um, so, and I think my guy has those kind of issues too, like a little bit of pride, a little bit of ego. And next thing you know, you got a Mexican standoff and nobody's getting what they want because everybody's assuming the other person should know and they're just not doing it. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's just any relationship you have to um, be always actively working to keep the relationship in a good place. So you just said you're setting aside a date day. So is right. that one of the challenges that you find uh, for yourself being a busy businesswoman is finding a balance between the drive that most of us creatives feel and making time to love uh, your guy or making time to, to be in love? Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. Because I'm so independent and I'm so, you know, I, I have to be moving. I have to be, you know, creating and doing and making things happen. So you have to, um, you have to be conscious of making time for your relationship. One of the things I really want to do, because I still desire to have a family, but I've realized that I haven't put forth the effort, the, the effort that I've been putting forth in my career and my accomplishments and this and that. I haven't made the conscious effort to do that for a relationship. So it's like, how do I expect to be equally as successful if I don't do that? So now that's where I, that's where I am right now is really making a conscious effort to um, to put. I don't know that I can put as much energy as I do in, in my career as I you know into that, but to be very conscious of of working towards what I really really want in my personal life. So when you were on American Idol and going to, through um, that um, intense um, time and pu publicity and pressure mm -hmm. and eyes, were you dating at that time? No, I actually was had just gotten divorced right before Idol. Okay. In your opinion, do you think that that time would have been a little easier if you would have been in a uh, committed relationship? Oh, I actually think that time would have been harder had I been in a committed relationship because you, when you're in a process like that, you're so absorbed in that, you can't even see straight. So someone would have totally felt neglected <laughs> during that process. Um, having someone to talk to and confiding, yes, that always helps. Um, but my family was super, super attached and involved and, you know, and just it was a big deal. And so I had that kind of support, moral support. But I think any, if I had been in a relationship, it would have been really tough for them at the time. And my ex-husband said it was tough for him. Like, it was tough for him because we had just gone through divorce and now here's your ex-wife on national television. And everybody's like making a big deal like your ex-wife. And it was like, just my, you know, we have been together for six years. So it was like really hard on him to not be there during that time in my life and for us to not be together. It was difficult. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, to answer your question, I think it would have been, someone would have felt neglected. Have you ever dated another actor? Uh, yeah, hung out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you say hung out? <laughs> Hung out, yeah. I've never had a what I would call what I would consider a serious relationship with another actor. No. Well, why didn't that situation birth into something more serious, in your opinion? I never. I always knew that I wanted to know at like that age. I was just kind of something. It was yeah. I was just doing something, and it, yeah, and we were hanging out. So I always feel like that is not my choice in life is to date an actor. <laughs> Like, no. So, yeah. We're <laughs> <Just> hanging out. <laughs> Have you ever tried online dating? Yes. And I think online dating is great, actually. Um, it's been a long time since, like, for whatever reason, the last relationship or two I've been in, it's just kind of, they've been, well, I wouldn't say really easy, but long term, and then they maybe by the time I get the itch to like, okay, I really want to get serious about dating someone again, I actually meet someone. 
but um, I think online dating is great. Like, I know, you know, people, I think it can be. I mean, it's like anything else, you have to do your due diligence and, you know, and your vetting and all that. But I think it puts you in a pool with people that you may not just come across. And it also can eliminate, I think it also can help you see the level of seriousness, especially on dates sites that you have to pay for and they really make you put the information in and you really, you know, they're really trying to analyze and match you up. I think it can help you weed through and get to people that are serious about having significant relationships. So you think that somebody who pays $30 a month is going to be more focused on having a serious relationship and not just paying $30 a month to have access to a million different women? Well, I mean, there's a whole bunch of free sites, right? I mean, there's sites that I've never seen, well, that I've never actually seen. Um, I know Tinder exists. People talk about Tinder a lot. And I think that's free, um, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not saying that's foolproof, but I'm just saying, and yes, people can absolutely do that. You know, they do it in real life. So of course they can do it online. I just feel like it does put you in a pool of people who, who clearly want to date. But these are the same people that walk around on the earth. It's not like people act like internet people are like some other group of people from another planet or something that don't exist. Like, these are the same people that you can meet, you know, in the street. So you still have to do your vetting process. But I will say this, like, it gives you an opportunity. People are truthful. It gives you an opportunity to kind of like, it's kind of like, have you ever seen um, autotrader.com? Yes. Where it's like, I want red, two-door, no, uh, you know, e- e- economy, e- gas economy, you know what I mean? It kind of gives you an opportunity to narrow some things down, whereas in the world, it's kind of like people just approach you and there's no filter, if you will, for the person. But online, it's kind of like, yeah, I want them to be this, 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 and this, and this, and this. Well, what you got? <laughs> right. Which is why oh. you're going to have to read some of my blogs on online dating. I think it is the best and the worst thing that has ever happened to I agree. society. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you give men access to a million different women. Why would he ever choose just one? Uh, and I also feel like, you know, when you are desiring a more quality woman, you'll pay for it. You'll spend a lot of extra time, but I don't think that makes you any more committed. But that's a whole other subject for another day. Now, the <laughs> next <Absolutely>. question. <laughs> We're currently uh, shooting a documentary called Tweet to Cheat. Uh, and it basically talks, uh, it deals with infidelity that is born out of the social media realm. Now, being in the industry and being, um, you know, creating your own products and projects, uh, you have to be very um, present on social media. So what's been your impression in terms of what you've seen in terms uh, in regards to, you know, fidelity or infidelity or how uh, people react and act and interact online? Most of the people, even for me, most of the people that I really interact with, everybody's about business and going after something. It may not necessarily be in the entertainment industry, but a lot of people that I know and socialize with and network with are people that are actually using it for the purposes of building their business or their brand. So I haven't seen a lot of the foolery, but I'm just, I'm very conscious of what I allow also in my circle and my psyche. And when people are talking crazy or people seem like they got those whole ways about them, I delete it. Like, I, don't, I just don't even indulge in that kind of stuff. Like, my timeline is probably really, really boring, for lack of a better word, because I just don't have a lot of the foolishness. And luckily for me, I don't even get approached with a lot of foolishness either. So what's been the craziest thing that's come your direction on social media? I just haven't had a lot of crazy. I really haven't. Because I try to um, shoot men down respectfully so I don't get cussed out. <laughs> <laughs> so I just say it in the most eloquent way possible. I'm so glad about it, but I have a man. And da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? Like, I try to really be respectful. You know what I'm saying? So yes. I just haven't had a lot of, quote unquote, crazy going on in social media. Thank God. Okay. So, have you found a um, 
discernible difference between, because I know you go between LA and Atlanta, have you found a discernible difference between the man in the South and the man in Los Angeles? Oh, Jesus, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a difference. Um, Southern men, Southern men, it's, it's probably like the same cliche that people are, Southern men just have a different value system. They have a different, um, Ah, a different, yeah, their values are just a little bit different, Mm -hmm. or a lot of it different, I should say. Um, It's what you would normally expect, you know what I mean? And there is no absolute, so I'm not saying all the men in L.A. are angels by any stretch of anyone's imagination. And I'm probably combining South Carolina and Atlanta, because I was born and raised in Columbia, South Carolina, Mm -hmm. and spent 15 Mm -hmm. years in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a very gentlemanly quality that men in the South had. Mm -hmm. Um... They're going to get up out of their chair and make sure you sit down. They're going to open your door. They're going to, you know, it's just a, a, a respect thing that's in them. They can be hoes and dogs and this and that, but they still have a level of chivalry to them that is missing in California. Hmm. Okay. So, in your opinion, um, you know, being that you were married once before and Mm -hmm. you said that you desire to have a family again Mm -hmm. um what did marriage teach you the first time that you hope to take into your next uh, marriage you know i i have a i have my story kind of crazy because i don't have a the hat in my mouth at all about marriage my my ex-husband was the homie right we kicked it we travel, we love to just live life, eat out. Just We just live, you know what I'm saying? And we, li- we really, really, really have fun together. So I think that's more important. That's the most important thing to me, is really enjoy my mate's company and us to have fun together and be happy to see each other and be a place of relief for each other. You know what I'm saying? Not the kind where it's like avoiding going home or... You know, I really, I really want to be happy and friends, homies with with my dude, like for real. So, there's nothing that comes to mind as a wife that you feel like now you've grown in this area and you'll be different in your next uh, run, married or run. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I took it for granted. Remember earlier when I was talking about it being a person, whoever is in the public eye, who's ever doing the, you know, things the most outside of the home, it's kind of their duty to make sure that other person feels comfortable or you do what you're supposed to do to make sure that that situation is grounded. I I was clueless when it came to that. Hmm. It just kind of was like, for me, it was like autopilot. It's like, oh, you just know, like, you know I love you. So let's go. You know what I mean? So I definitely now... Um, absolutely understand that my place in understanding my man and understanding what he needs and really asking like okay what what makes you happy what do I need to do to make you happy what are those things and like for real being conscious of that and finding the balance of putting just as much into my man in my home as I do pursuing my career that's definitely something I'm very conscious of now and last thing, um, how do you feel about, because I, you know, I get the feeling that you're very much like me in terms of you value your privacy. Um, as I stated before, a lot of celebrity couples are you know, present in the public eye, uh, and that brings mm-hmm. about a certain amount of scrutiny and also mm-hmm. uh, pressure. Uh, in your own relationship, at what point do you think you'll feel comfortable um, being on Front Street you know, with your your um, significant other. When you put a ring on it, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting no shine if my finger ain't shining. <laughs> ah, I dig it. I mean, that's just real. It's like I'm I'm a grown woman. Like I've had boyfriends since kindergarten. When we decide we're taking things to the next level and it's something significant, then yeah, we can selfie nation. But before that, I'm not, you know, bragging on 
a boyfriend. Like, hmm. you know. Okay. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. So again, yeah. you know, um, I'm wishing you love and passion uh, in your Thanks, relationship, Paul. yeah, and in your Thank life. You. But tell my listeners what you got going on, what they should look for. You know, drop your tags, and so they know where to find you. Go for it. Super consistent on social media. Everything is Kanik Sky, K I N N I K S K Y. So on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram. And uh, I will be releasing a new show, putting up a new show this uh, probably fall, winter. Um, I had a show called Pieces, so I'm, I'm debuting Pieces Part 2, which is called Pieces Still. Super excited about that. Um, I also have a 501c3 called Athletes and Entertainers for Change. And um, we're introducing a program this year called the Sky Academy, where I'm exposing inner city youth filmmaking. Um, so they can get exposed to jobs behind the scenes, so they can aspire to be more than just, you know, rappers, nothing wrong with it, basketball players, nothing wrong with it, but they need to know that there's more opportunities, especially in Hollywood for them. Um, and I'm also exposing them to arts and culture because that develops their cognitive thinking and their social skills and all that good stuff. So, um, those are my two major bases right now, my play and, and my foundation. And um, I'm excited. I just found out today I'll be directing um, an incredible actor, Rain Morton, in his uh, kind of one-man show called Eye Conversations that'll be at the Colony Theater in Burbank. So I'm staying busy. Dig it, dig it. So make sure you <laughs> friend Kanik and follow her success and her path and journey. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kanik Sky. For thank being. you for having me, Paul. So this is PDH, and again, with all things, make sure you do them in love. And one little tidbit I want to drop on you before you go, make sure you're listening to love songs as frequently as you possibly can. Remember, what goes in your spirit comes through your soul. So if all you take in is negativity, social media, reality TV, uh, ratchet, rap, or whatever it is, um, that's all that's churning inside of you. But every now and again, a relationship needs to be oiled and pruned and sold and seeded. And an uh, easy, quick way to do that is through love songs. You know, turn your radio up, you know, download some, some jams to your iPod, run to them, work out to them. You know, have them playing in your home when your boo comes in. And, you know, set your atmosphere up for love. And you'll find that that'll be conducive to um, uh, creating a, a space for you and your lover to really enjoy each other. This is PDH. It's all love and no hate. Coming to you again. PDH with the last script. Peace. You've been listening to The Love Script with Paul DeHanna. Follow us online at PDH Love Script YouTube. The Love Script and thelovescript.com